Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie, Bait 3D, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. The movie begins with Josh waking up to the news of an earthquake and humpback whales taking over the city. He got ready for work, noticing how the dogs in the neighborhood were barking unusually. When Josh arrived at work, in the parking lot, a couple were in their car, too busy kissing and making promises to each other to notice their dog barking persistently in the back seat. Meanwhile, a girl named Jamie was at the store where Josh and her boyfriend, Ryan, worked. She had stolen a pair of glasses, hoping to give them to Ryan as an anniversary gift, but was spotted by security. Panicked, she ran to Ryan's station. Though she meant well, Ryan insisted she return the glasses. Before they could resolve the issue, the store manager caught them and fired Ryan on the spot, even calling the cops on Jamie. As Josh went about his tasks, he had an unpleasant encounter. He ran into his ex fiance who was shopping with her new boyfriend. She was the sister of his friend Rory, who had died in a shark attack while Josh worked as a lifeguard. At that same moment, the store manager took the opportunity to make derogatory remarks about Josh. When the cop arrived to arrest Jamie, she realized it was her dad. She was confident he wouldn't take her in, but he had reached his limit and decided to put her in lockup for the night. He mentioned how disappointed her mom would be, but Jamie didn't want to talk about it. There was also a man in the store who had agreed to carry out a theft because he wanted them to leave his brother alone. Jamie's dad locked her in the car when he saw the man tasked with robbing the store walk in with a gun. Grabbing his own gun, he followed after him. Inside the store, even at gunpoint, the store manager refused to reveal where the money was, and the safe turned out to be empty. Jamie's dad arrived and aimed his gun at the robber, but suddenly, another masked robber appeared pointing a gun at a little girl. Meanwhile, Ryan unlocked the car door for Jamie. She didn't see anything wrong with what she had done, but Ryan thought she was in the wrong. Determined to make things right, Jamie went into the store to try and get Ryan's job back, as it meant something to her. The robbery was turning increasingly dangerous, but then a landslide hit, sending water from the beach flooding the store. Chaos erupted as many people were swept away, and several died in the flooding. Amid the disaster, Josh survived, as did the store owner, Jamie's injured father, and another man who stood staring into space. The store was completely ruined and underwater. They swam toward a shelf, trying to help Jamie's father. Jamie called out to her dad, and to everyone's relief, she seemed safe too. The store manager hurried to find a towel or anything that could help stop the bleeding. Jamie reached them and hugged her father tightly. Josh then heard the voice of his ex-girlfriend and called out to her. Jamie was still worried about Ryan, but the other man who had been rescued along with the store owner, Josh, and Jamie's father, said that Ryan couldn't be found when the store flooded. Josh swam over to Jamie and told her how to save her father before making his way to Tina, who looked distressed and confused, as her mind was in chaos. He helped her out of the water and onto a shelf where the others were gathered. More people were rescued, including the first robber and Tina's boyfriend. The couple, Kyle and Heather, were found alive in their car, which was submerged in the water but still floating. Ryan was also saved from his van, where he broke the windows to escape and swim to safety. Josh did his best to treat Jamie's father, who was injured, and he insisted they couldn't leave the robber behind. The group needed help, but Jamie's father couldn't swim. So, Josh proposed that he would stay behind while Tina and her boyfriend swam to the shooting bay. A man named Colin swam to the loading bay to look for more survivors. Ryan managed to climb out of the water onto a floating piece of debris, where cars and other heavy items were bobbing in the water. As he caught his breath, someone noticed movement in the water and alerted the others. Josh understood the urgency of the situation and called to Tina and her boyfriend, along with Collins, to get out of the water. But Collins didn't make it out in time and was bitten by what appeared to be a 12-foot great white shark. Jamie tried to save him, but it was too late. His body was severed from his arms. Meanwhile, Ryan found his footing on some cars and spotted Kyle after he poked his head through the top of a submerged vehicle. However, the shark was swimming closer forcing Ryan to retreat into the car, where his girlfriend was terrified. Inside the store, people realized there was an electrical malfunction that could ignite a fire, threatening to burn the entire place down. If they weren't killed by the shark, they would likely perish in the flames. Josh volunteered to swim to the storage room despite Tina's protests about his injured arm. He knew the shark was drawn to noise, but he also understood that it was more focused on finding its next meal. Tina's boyfriend, Stephen, suggested another idea. They could see that Kyle's car was the shark's next target, and everyone was scared to the bone, screaming for Ryan to help. Ryan urged them to stay still, promising he would find a solution. Ryan's plan was to lure the shark toward him, while everyone swam to his van as quickly as possible. 
Kyle agreed and urged Heather to stay still. Stephen suggested that he cover himself in bars and tie a rope around himself while he swam to the power room to turn it off. Before entering the water, Stephen told Josh that Tina missed him and that she knew everything that had happened wasn't his fault. Tina wished him luck and asked him to please come back while they held tightly to the rope. However, the rope was too short for Stephen to reach the power source. He untied himself and managed to turn off the power, but it became impossible for him to swim back on his own, and he tragically drowned. Tina cried when she learned of Stephen's fate, and Jamie tried to comfort her by sharing a painful memory of her own. She explained how she had run away when her mom was sick because she couldn't bear the situation, and now this disaster felt like a payback for trying to escape. Jamie's dad then turned to Josh and asked if they would ever make it out of this nightmare. Josh replied optimistically that they would make it out, just as he noticed a hole in the ceiling. Meanwhile, Ryan severed a hand from one of the dead bodies to distract the sharks, allowing Heather and Kyle to swim to his van. They successfully made it, but in the process, Kyle sacrificed Heather's dog, which made Heather very angry. Josh found a rope and secured it to help them slip through the hole, but it couldn't hold much weight. The store manager decided to go first. As he climbed through the rope, held by Josh and the robber, he spotted numerous spiders. His agitation caused him to lose his balance, and despite their attempts to drag him up, the shark reached him and bit him. Ryan tried to climb over a pipe to reach a door but fell into the water instead. In the chaos of helping him, Kyle also fell in and was bitten by the shark. The robber realized they couldn't wait around to be killed, so he planned to hook and kill the shark. Jamie's dad volunteered to be used as bait, but just in time, Jamie jumped in the water, drawing the shark toward her. They all tried to distract the shark by making a loud banging noise. The shark lunged at Jamie, but she fought back with a hammer, forcing it to retreat. She managed to hook a piece of meat and was pulled back up. The robber noticed how Josh stared at Tina and asked if he knew her. Josh replied that he used to know her. The robber encouraged him, saying that after this, everything they knew would feel like a long time ago. Josh then spoke to Tina about how he blamed himself for his friend Rory's death. He explained that he was the one who always fixed the buoy, but he had asked Rory to do it that day, which led to the shark attack. He apologized, but Tina told him she never blamed him. Instead, he should learn to forgive himself. The shark swam past the bait they had set. One of the other survivors pulled the hook back up, realizing that what the shark needed was live bait. It turned out he was the other robber who had shot someone and had put his mask on someone else. He grabbed another survivor named Naomi and pointed his gun at anyone who tried to get closer. He used Naomi as bait and threw her into the water. But while doing so, he got distracted, and the first robber, named Kirby, threw a spade at him. They managed to save Naomi and decided to use the robber as bait instead and it worked. Heather worried that no one would come to help them, but just then, her dog, which she thought was dead, swam to her. She knew it was a sign of hope. Jamie, her dad, and Tina got ready to swim, but Jamie heard a call sign from Ryan. Instantly, she knew it was him, and without thinking, she swam toward him. Jamie's dad begged Josh to follow her. Tina called out to Josh and kissed him before he left. Josh and Jamie managed to reach the car park, but they quickly realized it wasn't just one shark. They got out of the water, and Jamie found her dad's car, which had a gun in the back. Josh grabbed it and skillfully shot at one of the sharks. They joined the others, where the robber was trying to create an exit using high voltage. Just then, another shark attacked. Josh shot at it again, and the robber blew a hole for them to escape. Finally, they all got out just in time. As they flew up in a helicopter, they saw the whole city in chaos below them. The movie ends with an aerial shot of the city, and Tina asks what they would do next. Josh responds that they would start over. Please like, share, and subscribe.